Good evening, Facebook land. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather here in Toronto. And I hope that you are, you know, enjoying the, the nice sunshine and the nice cool breeze that we're having. And if you're not from Toronto, I hope that you're enjoying your evening anyway. I would like to welcome you to my third episode of Letting Go to Heal. And today we're going to let go of foods that can cause pain and discomfort. Are you suffering from aches and stiffness that ruins your day? You wish you could do something about it? Are you searching for ways to, to quickly suit those minor discomforts? Have you tried everything and nothing seems to work? Hi, my name is Sandy Meg, and I'm a health and life coach. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to help you to let go of foods that are triggering your joint pains and are causing you discomfort, like bloating and gas. It starts with a secret you probably never heard from your doctor or from any healthcare professional. The truth is there's five specific, specific food. I can never say that word, specific. There's five specific foods that may be triggering your daily discomfort, like achy joints, um, lack, of, lack of flexibility. And these things are normally associated with aging. And the doctor usually tells you that it's aging. My friend actually went to the doctor to complain about uh, his joint pain. He thought he might have arthritis. And the doctor says, no, nope, it's aging. So, you know, the doctors don't delve into the actual cause of all your joint pains or your um, your discomfort. They are, they're, quick, they're quick to write a prescription or to tell you that it's old age. Um, my friends are like 52 or 53, so how old, how old is that? Um, so anyway, the sooner you take action to eliminate these five food landmines, the sooner you can experience the warm tingling relief and, and significantly less discomfort, just like that. And that's not all. I'm going to share several more secrets that you can begin right away to bring lasting relief to those sore and achy joints. I will show you how you can support your body's natural ability to maintain strong and healthy and flexible joints for life. And if this sounds like a big deal, it is. So stay tuned. Why don't I take a sip of water? What I'm about to share with you may be the biggest health revelation you hear this year. I should know. I'm not only a health coach, but for the past two years, I have been suffering from achy joints, bloating, indigestion, discomfort, and weight gain until I discovered what was causing it. And what was causing it was celiac, and celiac is caused by gluten, but we'll talk about that later on um, as I get into this. So after completing my my health coach training, I was able not only to live a healthier lifestyle, but I was able to help people in all walks of life to achieve optimal joint health. But here's the thing. My greatest satisfaction has always come from dealing with ordinary men and women who don't know which way to turn to in their search for solutions to these joint discomforts, this bloating, gas, and pain. So it makes me proud that regular folks, just like you and I, have sought out to, to deal with their achy backs, their sore neck, their tender muscles and joints. But let's face it, the truth is, life is way too short to risk your health to those who are afraid of the truth or who would rather write a prescription than to help you find alternative solutions. They want nothing more than to keep you from doing the things that got you in this predicament in the first place. So you can keep going back to them and prescription after prescription and adding to your medications and it's still not working. That's why I take a focus stand today. So if your bones sometimes feels achy and your fingers feel stiff or bending down to pick up a piece of paper occasionally make you, you know, grimace in pain, or are you having bloating for no reason? There is some good news. And it does so it doesn't have to always be that way. Today, I will teach you 
I'll teach you to take uh, personal control of your joint pain. Flare up, bloating, instead of taking, let, instead of them taking control of you. So let's go. What is the first thing that I tell my clients to do? You need to avoid five worst foods like the plague. And I know it sounds crazy. Most people don't realize it. But foods, there are foods, there are certain foods that are harmful to you. But you might think that they're good for you, like vegetables, right? But as you get older and you start to experience sore back or aching knees, you think it's the result of age or hard work. Or maybe you had injuries like, uh, you know, sports injuries or you might have fell and broke your, your ankle. Or you might even chalk it up to um, genetics. The truth is, one of these five foods could be the heart of why you're experiencing annoying and an aching, uh, an aching and stiffness ever so often. That's why I prepared this special video, you know, to, to walk you through this. So over the next few minutes, I'll show you how to steer clear of the five biggest food, the five biggest foods that I believe sabotage your health and make your experience making you experience joint pain and discomfort. Far worse, at the top of the list is a certain type of vegetable. Yes, vegetable, I said it. So if you always thought that greens, are, all greens are good for you, um, you know, and you should eat more vegetables, you'll definitely want to see that this is because one of the worst offenders of all is some of the vegetables that you're eating. We will get more into this later on. Based on my training in, in health and life coaching, um, this one particular food can boost your overall joint health, allowing you to bend and, and flex more, uh, more, more easily. Removing some of these foods from your diet will also trigger a proper and, and healthy inflammatory response throughout your entire body. And that's crucial if you want to feel younger starting now. I think of this as flipping a switch inside your body to help you, you know, make you feel more flexible uh, with significantly less discomfort that you've experienced in years. And the real reason why more modern medicine may not have answered, uh, answered these questions for you um, regarding your daily aches and pains. So I'll show you a natural breakthrough that offers long lasting relief for sore joints. Now let's dive into these troubling foods that are maybe battering your joints without you even knowing it. I won't be surprised if you have a few of these things in your fridge or your pantry right now. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but breakfast foods are the worst foods you could be eating. Because as far as your body's concerned, there's much, not, not much difference between a bagel, a muffin, or a plate of pasta and a heaping pile of sugar. Let me repeat that. There's not, not much difference between a bagel, a muffin, or a plate of, pa plate of pasta, and a heaping pile of sugar. So if you're eating white bread or muffins for breakfast, these are your body's main source of energy in the morning, but these are all refined foods. Not all cards are e created equal. Unfortunately, the refining process removes helpful dietary fiber, vitamins, and minerals from food products. But that's not the main reason I'm telling you to go easy on refined food. Are you someone who occasionally experiences like the irritated, uh, stiff joints every time you eat some, some kind of foods? I am. You see, it all has to do with keeping your body in equilibrium. That's the key to happy, healthy joints and eating. Refined carbs create an inflammatory response, which is not what we want. So, how can you get healthful, health, healthier carbs that your joints will love while avoiding the ones that are refined? Well, that's easy. You can eat more green vegetables beans, lentils, chickpeas, fruits, but in their natural state. 
Switch to sweet potatoes from white potatoes. For reasons I'm going to explain in a moment, let's talk about the, you know, let's talk about the five worst foods, the landmines that I call it first. So number one is gluten. Gluten is a protein found in various grains, such as wheat, rye, and barley-based products. On my research, uh, from my own experience, while trying to find gluten-free foods, as I said, I was diagnosed with celiac about two years ago. I found that many people are sensitive to gluten products, especially when it comes to their joints. It's not uncommon for people who have been experiencing irritated, achy joints to experience positive results after making the decision to go gluten-free. And, and I, I have done that, and, and I have found that it had helped me tremendously with the joint pains. I thought I had hereditary rheumatoid arthritis until I went gluten-free. And that pain went away. And every time I try to like bring it back into my diet, I get the same sort of achy pains in my joints. So um, so because what we're shooting for is supporting a normal inflammatory response in keeping with your body's chemistry and balance. So I encourage you to try to avoid gluten on a trial basis to see for yourself whether your body uh, respond, is, is responding in a positive way. You could experience more comfort and more mobility and more flexibility. I bet your joints will thank you. It's not that hard to do. Simply substitute quinoa, whole oats, or brown rice every time you're thinking of having pasta, for example. And go easy on the bear. This is, this is for the men. Because most bears contain wheat, rye, or barley, which means they also contain gluten. Okay, so let's keep going because I have a lot more helpful information to share with you today. It's time to reveal the second worst food for your joints. Number two is omega-6 fats. Now your doctor may have mentioned omega-6 fats to you and, and you might not have remembered because I didn't remember. These fatty acids are necessary for the human health but your body can't make them. You can only get them through diet. But you need to be careful because it's easy to consume a lot of omega-6 fats since you'll find them in like safflower oil, corn oil, peanut oil, soy oil, and vegetable oil. So <laughs> you're thinking, what the heck am I gonna cook with? Coconut oil. Omega-6 fatty acids are also found in mayonnaise, salad dressings, and nearly all snacks that are processed. So you may want to say no thanks for the chopping down to all, any of these lunchtime snacks. Like you know, we go for 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 um, a sandwich at lunchtime, and it has mayonnaise in it. But it's important not to confuse omega six with the re related fatty acid omega threes, because omega threes are good for you, and omega threes are found in such foods like salmon, walnut grass-fed meat. These are products that are considered healthy fats for a good reason. While omega-3 fats dilate blood vessels and improve blood flow and inhibits inflammation, omega-6 fatty acids have the opposite effects. And studies have shown that instead of dilating the blood vessels, they tend to constrict them instead. So I'm not just saying you need to in eliminate all the fats from your life or your diet. Like I said before, it's all about maintaining a healthy balance. And that includes striking a healthy balance between omega-6 and omega-3 fats in your diet. Keeping these fats in balance helps to, to keep your body's normal inflammatory response in equilibrium. It, it's quite simple to do starting today. So go easy on the intakes of oils, mayonnaise, and other foods that may be containing omega-6 while increasing your intake of healthy omega-3s, which are in abundance in many varieties of fish, shellfish, as well as many nuts and seeds as well. And while you're at it, I want to mention an important subject probably nobody, not even your doctor told you about. It's something called fibrin. And I never heard of it until I was doing my research on inflammation and joint pain. 
this is a sticky protein behind the, the joint pain and inflammation. So it's a sticky protein that forms this cap around any damaged tissue. So both internally and externally, it's part of a normal immune response. So having a healthy level of fiber is a good thing, but only when everything is in balance. So when you have a healthy balance of vibrant that helps promote a normal inflammatory response, that's what you want because, because doing so promotes not only the health of your joints and muscles, but also your overall health. I'll tell you more about this uh, special protein in a minute. But first, let's get back to the rest of the worst foods for your joints. This one saddens me because I still love these type of foods. And, you know, we still occasionally have it, but not very often like we used to. And that is number three, fried food, blackened food, and barbecue food. I hate to be a party pooper. But did you know that grilling, your grilling habits can be doing a world of damage to your joints? And I discovered this. I, I actually traced it every time my husband would barbecue. Um, I would get joint pain that same night. And that's because any food that is cooked at high temperature, including charbroil, blackened barbecue, smoked, seared, and grilled, they often contain har humble byproducts that contributes to the oxidation stress and the creation of cell damaging free radicals. Take one more sip. These radicals are called advanced glycate. I have to hold on, I'm going to say this properly. Glycation uh, products, and we call it AGE for short, and, or AGE for short. So what's the problem with AGE? AGE can throw off your inflammatory balance. Hold on, somebody's asking me to say that again. Glycation end products. So AGE can throw off your inflammatory balance meaning that they can potentially impact your joints and bones, potentially adding to your daily discomfort and flexibility woes. I know, I know. We have folks watching this right now who are like saying nothing more than it. Like, you know, they would love to have uh, a nice juicy steak or a burger on a charcoal grill, especially on a sunny day like today. I too am one of those people, and so is my husband. They call him the barbecue king. So there are many ways to prefer, prepare your food, though. Um, you know, like don't barbecue every day or every week. Try to do it once in a while if you really love barbecue. Um, but try to stay away from it as much as you can. And there's many ways that you can, you know, have your food prepared in a more joint-friendly manner. My advice is to consider stewing, boiling, braising, crock potting, or even steaming your food instead of trying to cook them with, you know, with moist, you know, try to cook them with moist heat instead of like high heat on a lower temperature for a shorter period of time. That's a great way of minimizing AGE formation. And there's something else that you should do as well. An easy to implement situate, solution that can help you keep your a AGE formation in normal range, even on those occasions when you slip up and don't eat the way you should. And we all do it. We all slip up and we all, you know, fall off the bandwagon, but get back on it. Let's move on to the, la the last two foods that you should be aware of. And then I'm gonna come back to some of these AGE products. So number four, and you've probably heard of this before, um, I heard about it, but I didn't know what it was. Number four is nightshade vegetables. Remember I told you that not all vegetables are created as one? Well, one group in particular that you need to be cautious of is called nightshade vegetables. I know this is a weird name for an umbrella term for some commonly eaten vegetables, especially in the West Indian community, including tomatoes, like white potatoes, eggplant, bell peppers, chances are that you have you just recently had a meal with these foods. Try to see how you're feeling after that. What most people don't know is that these vegetables contain a compound called glycoalkaloid. 
It's a chemical that acts as a natural defense for plants, but it's, it can be toxic for you. As a result, some people are sensitive to this vegetable or these vegetables. What could happen to these people who are sensitive is that eating nightshade plants could lead to calcium deposits in the ligaments, in the cartilage and joints, and actually worsen the joint discomfort because of the way that they affect the calcium metabolism in your body, resulting in achy joints, stiffness, soreness, lack of flexibility, bloating, gas, um, and definitely this is not what you want. It may be beneficial to Im eliminate the nightshades and to see how it, it affects you. You know, try try not eating it for a while and see how it affects you. And so that's why I'm here to tell you about these things. You, your, your joints will thank you if you eliminate the nightshades vegetables. And I'm going to mention these nightshade vegetables again. I have a chart here that I'm going to look. I'm reading from it. Tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplants, okros, goji berries, a lot of uh, like East Indian food are cooked with goji berries, peppers, sorrel, blueberries, brown cherries, tobacco, paprika, cayenne pepper, just to name a few. You can Google this. You'll find it. You, it's easily found on the internet. Um, just Google nightshade vegetables. So one option is to replace some of these nightshade vegetables with yummy foods like sweet potatoes and cauliflower. So, you know, try, try to do it and see how you feel. Now, one last but definitely not least is to talk about what is the biggest food landmine out there. And that is number five, sugar, sugar, sugar. Do you have a sweet tooth? Well, even if you don't, you might want to listen to this closely because believe it or not, a study by the National Institute of Health leads us to believe that our attraction to intensely sweet food could be as strong as, strong as a drug, drug addiction. And in testing some animal subjects, or the, it was presented that the choice between water sweetened with uh, a sweetener, um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually 95% of them prefer the sweet water, the sweet taste of the the sugar water rather than the, the regular water. Um, and the bad news is that excessive sugar intake can shoot up your levels of inflammation. Um, and and it, it, that causes the, the joint dysfunction, destructions as well. That's scary when you think of how we go into the supermarket and we see rows and rows of sugar products. And everything is packed with sugar. It's a big temptation when we go into the grocery store. We see ice cream, chocolate, cake, cookies, pies. And, and you want to bring it home. You want to buy it and bring it home. Most of these things, get this, it comes out about 17 teaspoons of sugar every day. But what if you could slash this number by a third or by half? Or mo maybe more. Easing up on sugar-laden foods even a little bit at a time can help reduce the amount of minor joint pains and discomfort you face every day. So you should really consider it. If you are serious about wanting your joints to feel flexible and smooth, you should admittedly, you know, do these, do these, do these uh, tricks and see how you feel. Look for anything ending in, like when you go to the grocery store, I had to learn this. Look for anything that ends in O-S-C-E, such as sucrose, fructose, corn syrup, dextrose, and so on. You can It's all labeled. You can see it at the back of, uh, of, of uh, any grocery item. So the best thing to do is uh, cut down on your sugar intake and eat whole or minimally processed food like fruits, vegetables, meats in their natural states. And that would be a great start. And what are the potential benefits? Minimizing sugar supports optimal weight and sugar and weight and uh, blood sugar. But my main goal here is to remind you that eating less sugar promotes all essential inflammatory balance, which is so important for you, for your joints. Okay, so I've told you the five foods and the five food groups to avoid for optimal joint health. 
but we're not done yet. Remember when I first mentioned fiber? That's the sticky protein in your body that produces the form of a scab around the area of an injury or a tissue damage. Yes, it's a good thing, but it's important to, to maintain a proper balance of fibers in order to support optimal joint. Remember the old days when you were younger and you could run and twist and bend and play hopscotch and play skip and rope without having to feel any effects of these activities afterwards? Well, in large, that's because you were younger and you had a younger body and did a better job of supporting your normal inflammatory response and regulating fibrin levels inside the body. This changes as you get older, as we age. Now we're talking about age again. As we age, our bodies, uh, you know, that's because our we, we produce uh, essential enzymes called uh, preolithic enzymes. This drastically decreases as we get older. And these enzymes, it helps keep fiber levels in check to allow healthy blood flow to your joints, which supports help joint and mobility to soothe the joint discomfort. But unfortunately, the mass majority of these older adults today have low level of these enzymes. And that's why um, I feel like letting go of these certain foods would really help, help gratefully help in the joint pain and discomfort. So here are some healthy facts. Dietary fiber is essential to a healthy diet. Eat more fiber. What is dietary fiber? Dietary fiber is also known as a rough bulk, which includes like plant-based foods that your body can di can't digest or absorb. Unlike other food components such as fat, protein, or high carbohydrates, your body breaks down and absorbs fiber, but it isn't digest. You know, instead it passes relatively uh, through your stomach, through your small intestines and your colon out of your body. So fiber is commonly classified as soluble, which dissolves in water, you know? Um, so soluble fiber is a type of fiber that dissolves in water to form a gel-like material. And this is con like, you'll find these soluble fiber in fibers in foods like oats, peas, beans, apples, citrus, fruits, carrots, barley, that kind of stuff. So and then the other thing is to try to lower your it, it you know doing eating low, lower um soluble fibers lower lowers your cholesterol as well. And these are found in like beans and flax seeds and all that. Um the daily fiber recommendation for adults ages 50 or younger is 30 for men is 38 grams from for women is 30. Um and you can look these up as well on on the internet. If you're if you're not getting enough fiber each day, you may want to boost your intake. And this would include things like whole grain products, fruits, vegetables, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds. Uh, the refined foods that we talked about are things like canned fruits and canned vegetables, pulp-free juices, white bread, pasta, and non-whole wheat cereals. Try not to eat those processed foods. Try to stick to the, the natural foods. Um, you know, the, the other thing that I wanted to tell you was um, drink lots of water. Um, and and water helps the fibers to work uh, to, uh, to, uh, to work in your body, making your stool soft and bulky. So to recap, let's go to the five landmines again. And these are the things that we're going to try to let go this week of. And they are gluten, omega-6 fats, barbecue or blackened foods or fried foods, and nightshade vegetables, and sugar. So if we can try this for this week and see how we feel about um, letting go of these things. Um, and please come back and let me know next week how it worked out for you. Um, I have some things to take care of. My phone's been going off the hook, so I hope you've enjoyed it and you... Uh, you know, you can look at this at your leisure and try to see what works well for you. Have a great evening and we shall talk again next week.